Hi everyone, it's Nikki here from Happy Hormones for Life and I've got the uh, fabulous Dr. Joanna Martin with me today. She is a renowned visionary, coach and catalyst, leading women into a new global paradigm. Yeah, it's that big. <laughs> her message and her work have directly impacted over 120,000 people on four different continents. And as founder of one of many, she leads a movement of grassroots leadership training and coaching for women managers and entrepreneurs and every woman actually changing their corner of the world with coaches in over 11 countries. She's also a diplomatic wife, a sometimes too tired mother, a protective sister and a caring friend with a cool head. She's got a really big heart. Welcome, Jo. Thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, thanks for having me, Nikki. It's a real pleasure to be here with your people. So excited about today's call because I know you've got something very exciting going on at the moment. So I really appreciate your time as well to come in and talk to these ladies. No problem. First of all, I want to know, and many of the listeners and watchers want to know, why did you create one of many? Well, um, I was nursing my son, James, at the time. Um, he was about six weeks old and, uh, you know, in the darkened room breastfeeding. And, you know, a lot of probably a lot of your community are, are mums or um, have uh, experienced that creative kind of uprush you have when you're very close to birth. You know, there's this, I don't know, you see a lot of stuff. You can't do anything with the ideas that you have because you've got a baby attached to you. But for me, there was, a, there was this moment where I realized there was that quote from the Dalai Lama that gets, you know, thrown around a lot that um, uh, the world will be saved by the Western woman. He said it at the Vancouver Peace Summit in 2009. And it's kind of always resonated for me. But I had this realization that, wow, he's not talking about prime ministers or presidents or like necessarily leaders of companies. He's talking about me. You know, that was a realization I had. And not just me, my neighbor and my sister and my mom and my gran and my aunt and my community, you know, and I didn't have a community of women back then, but I just realized that actually, if we want to shift the dial on the way the world is, and there are so many of us women who care, I call us grassroots women leaders, women who care and want to change things. And I just got, I don't know, I just got that it was us he was talking about. And if enough of us can step up, to be able to make an impact in our corner of the world. It doesn't have to be huge. Maybe our corner is just our family and bringing up the next generation. Maybe our corner is our village or our local community. You know, um, uh, graduates of our programs are doing things like setting up um, biodiversity projects, you know, food forests, you know, getting people engaged in the environment in their local area. Maybe our corner of the world is, you know, like you and your women, Nikki, you know, supporting us from the, from the nutritional perspective. Um, or maybe it is global. Maybe it is like a leading a country or, or what have you. But if, if we can step up and lead and make an impact in our corner of the world, but here's the kicker, not the old way. Because in the past, the only way we could see of doing that is through superwoman and burning ourselves out. So a lot of us have these hopes and dreams to make an impact, but we don't, we hold ourselves back from them because we think the only way there is via burnout and fatigue or, or you know, that, that we have to have that if that's the only way. And I realize that it's not, that that is not necessary, provided we have the tools for living sustainably at an individual level, we can impact the world to become more sustainable, I think at a global level. So for me, I'm kind of one of many was born as a, I, I guess, a, a leadership and coaching organization to support women who want to make an impact, but don't want to compromise their own well-being in the, along the way. Oh, perfect. Music to my ears. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know, so many health problems are created through, through stress and burnout. So if we can achieve and feel fulfilled and have all that uh, potential realized without doing that my goodness what a force we can be honestly absolutely absolutely and what is this you talk about this um especially recently you've been talking about this paradigm shift for women that you see following um, especially following this this um pandemic this crisis tell us a little bit about that yeah it's something i've been talking about right since the beginning because i think even though a lot of us don't have language for it what a lot of us want to see in the world is a shift from old paradigm to new paradigm old paradigm being individualism, competition, achievement, no matter what, growth, you know, GDP, no matter what, um, at the cost of relationships, community, sustainability, the planet, you know, we've, we've, 
we've lost a lot of trust in our leaders, health, right? Health and well-being. And, 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 and so this old paradigm way of operating, which we have gone after um, for such a long time, like decades, generations, centuries, really, is not, is not serving us as a species anymore. So I think um, as a species, we have wanted to make this shift. I mean, you look at leaders like Greta uh, that kind of captured our attention and our interest in the 12 months in the lead up to this moment. Um, and, uh, you know, um, uh, and Extinction Rebellion, you know, lots of, there's a lot happening in the global space around this paradigm shift that we want to see. We're also in the business space uh, seeing, uh, you know, from my trip to Necker Island last year, I met Hala thomas Dota, who is the CEO of the B team. And she's talking about, you know, equity and trust and sustainability in the business context. And a lot of business leaders stepping up to that paradigm shift. So this is being talked about in loads of different areas at a big level here in the UK, you know, politics kind of almost feels like it ground to a halt because the old system isn't working. So I feel like what, what the pandemic has done for us in this moment is it almost feels like it's delivered a bit of a death blow to the old system. There is a fracturing that is happening in terms of business, you know, the economy, um, uh, uh, you know, ha nothing short of a global pandemic could have stopped the planes that are causing so much climate change, right? Um, nothing short of a global pandemic could have stopped us from some of the habits that a lot of us have made and changed in terms of our consumption. Um, so there's this, there's this kind of blessing that's available and, and a lot of us who care, you know, a lot of these grassroots leaders that I'm talking about can see on the horizon the possibility of a lower consumption, a more conscious paradigm where we're really asking ourselves and reprioritizing at an individual level, a family level, and I think potentially a national and global level, what's important. So this is this paradigm shift moment that we're in. Like we have smashed it. Like coronavirus has smashed our old operating system. Mm -hmm. Now, I am not uh, delusional enough to think that without very conscious effort, we won't end up back there. Mm -hmm. Every, you know, we had a big, the global financial crisis in 2008. Um, we ended up just with a worse version of, of it, you know, just the same thing. So unless enough of us consciously say, no, we're shifting. This is it. This is the shift moment. And we emerge from this together in a kind of united front. It doesn't have to be everyone on the planet, just a critical mass. We can emerge from this in some way and say, this is what we want to shape together. This is what I want to be a stand for. And I will change these habits. And I'm asking you, my, our leaders, our global leaders, our political leaders, you know, um, leaders in our schools, leaders in wherever, I'm asking you to change these things. We take responsibility for our own changes and the changes we demand of those people in positions of kind of, um, you know, governing power. That's when I think we can actually really make the shift that's felt like it's been on this horizon for maybe 30, 40 years you know, it feels like this could be that moment if we can interrupt those habits. But as women who care and we're living in this, it's tough because we're present to what could be. We're still in the old paradigm. And by our very nature, those of us who can feel the possibility, we're sensitive, you know, women like you and I, we're sensitive. And so emotionally, it's even harder than normal right now because yeah. we're getting this energetic dissonance of like, <gasps> We're, there it is, and oh, this feels even harder because there's even more on our plates. So it's kind of even more important right now as women who care to be, um, to be nurturing and nourishing ourselves ever more deeply. So we've got that energy that it's going to take to shift the dial. Yeah, and that's tough, isn't it? When you're low on time, you're low on energy, you're being asked to be, you're being pulled in so many different ways. Yeah. You know, I hear you. Um, I heard the words bandied about in the one of many communities: superwoman, bitch, and martyr. Can you just explain what they mean? Because they yeah. um, very yeah. familiar. Um, people come into the, <laughs> the community and they're, they're talking about, oh my god, I was in bitch today. What? What? Wow! Wow! We're pretty open here, right? Um, uh, yeah. So one of the things that we notice um, from our women is we're all awesome. Like every single woman in our community is awesome. Most of the time, we're pretty damn good. We're capable, we're intelligent. We know what we ought to be doing. And every single woman in our community, myself included, has moments where we're not at our best. 
And usually it's a Swiss cheese model of a few things, you know, lack of sleep, too many things, looming deadlines, whatever it might be. We all have our unique escalation path. Um, We get to these point where we get triggered into what we call the disempowering archetypes. We do quite a lot of work with archetypes inside of our work because it depersonalizes the behaviors that we experience. It makes it easier for us to change. But the disempowering archetypes that we talk about, uh, Superwoman is kind of our pinup girl because so much of our cultural paradigm um, and the business paradigm and our family patterning tells us that we have to be Superwoman, you know, achieve no matter what, do it all by yourself, be the best. And we either choose Superwoman, sometimes we look at that and go, I don't want that. We check out and we choose anti-Superwoman, which is kind of like all that that's not. Um, I've noticed this a lot with women who grew up with superwoman mums. They're like, if that's what it looks like, fuck that. I'm not doing it, right? Um, sorry, I'm, I swear a lot in my community. I hope it's okay to swear in your Sorry, so do I. So that both of those are like a lot. Of, I mean, there was a book in the 80s, like how to be a superwoman. So it used to be cool. But actually, we know it burns out. I mean, your women in your community are with you, a lot of them, because they're suffering from you know, hormone issues and infertility or burnout or whatever because of superwoman. It impacts our, our, um, our hormones, right? I think our testosterone levels rise, uh, you know, when, when we're living in that uh, masculinized state. And then superwoman's got a few cousins. <laughs> uh, her cousins are the bitch, the victim and the martyr. If we spend a lot of time either in superwoman or anti-superwoman, it's not long before, you know, bitch mama comes out. She's shouting and yelling at the kids, trying to get them into the bath and out the other bath, right? Well, me too, right? We all do, especially at the moment that, you know, they're all surfacing much more than in our normal time. Um, victim is, victim is like, oh, it's all happening to me. You know, everything's, uh, there's nothing I can do anyway because they are doing that and they are doing that and the global pandemic and the this and the that. And everything, all the center and locus of control is outside and there's nothing I can do. I'm powerless to change anything. And then another one, I bet your women do this one a lot. This is my poison of choice, martyr. Um, You know, putting everybody else's needs before our own. If we've got children, putting our kids' needs. If we've got elderly neighbors, our parents, our um, spouse, our boss, our everybody else that we work with, putting all of their needs before our own and putting ourselves at the bottom of the list, that's kind of martyrdom. And what we notice is that when we spend, if we spend too much time in superwoman, superwoman's okay for 15 minutes, but most of us live there for 15 years. And then we trigger into these, you know, disempowering archetypes more frequently. Uh, And they're not helpful. You know, we're not centered in power and we're not able to respond in a powerful way when we're in victim, bitch or martyr. It's just not possible. And what does awareness of these archetypes kind of, what does that help us do in a way? Can we, can we avoid them? Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We've got a, we've got a great tool actually that we use called trigger tracking, which is one where we help people to identify what triggers in their everyday life cause them to flip into the disempowering because it is like that, right? We're doing okay. And then all of a sudden we're a pile of self-pity on the floor or we're doing okay. And then all of a sudden we're shouting at our spouse, right? So there are usually triggers. And when we can kind of dis- have a look and dig into enough of the triggers, we start to see patterns. That gives us two lots of information. One lot of information is we can consciously, from our conscious mind, notice the triggers. And then when they come, consciously choose to bring a different archetype. And we talk about the five women's power types as, um, as, as the, the, the uh, options there. And I'll come back and talk about those in a moment. Yep. So we can consciously choose a different archetype or in our case, power types to respond. The other thing that tool helps us to do is identify old stuff that we're gathering, we're dragging around because a lot of the time we're dragging around emotions from our past. It's not even what happened in the moment. It's what it reminds us of or what it, or the bucket of stuff inside it splashes around in, you know, if we're lugging around a boatload of resentment, at our partner because they hurt us 14 years ago um, or even 14 minutes ago, right? It's not, it's not the fact that the cup was dropped and it broke. It's the resentment of, of, of that behavior, or it's the resentment that we're doing all of the domestic work. And that's what has us trigger. So the other place that, that, that having awareness of our disempowering archetypes helps, helps us to work is we can see 
What is the unconscious load that we're carrying around? It's usually made up of emotions, fear, anger, guilt, shame. You know, it's old stuff. It's not necessarily present stuff. It's old stuff usually if we haven't done any mindset work. Um, or it's limiting beliefs. You know, we get triggered when someone, uh, when someone uh, triggers our I'm not good enough. You know, I noticed that one with my husband. We have a fabulous relationship, but just something about a particular tone of voice of his, the way that he says things to me, I just take it as a criticism and it triggers my I'm not good enough and I'm in defensive. And all he was doing was making a totally non-personal observation, you yeah. know. So we can let go of those things um, through practice and meditation if we have the tools as well. So massive improvements in relationships for a start, right? Because mm. you're not lugging around all that stuff that you're throwing at them all the time. Absolutely huge. Um, and not just relationships. I know for women in your community, one of the things that we have noticed a lot of women who go through our programs is that when they start letting go of emotions and limiting beliefs and stuff from the past, health and health choices often improve. Oh, yeah. Because a lot of the reason that we don't apply what we know we should be doing in the context of our health is because of disempowering archetypes, yeah. like the inner saboteur, you know, the, sab the one that will sabotage us, um, and, uh, and the inner critic that I'm not doing it well enough or good enough, so I'd, I'll just give up, you know, um, which are all and more of these disempowering archetypes. I've never talked about those, but, um, but they... All of those things mean that we don't do what we said we we're going to do. But also there's so much research that shows um, carrying around this old emotion, old traumas, actually directly impacts our um, physiology, right? Cortisol, yeah, surely. It's got to it's gotta raise that all the time. Absolutely. So we've got you know, great emotional hygiene stuff for getting physically getting the emotion out of the body, which can do a massive, uh, you know, massive kind of contribution towards, you know, health and health and well-being. And then when you can choose to come from your five women's power types, basically you've got then access to the inner resources to be able to handle every opportunity or challenge that a mature woman could ever have thrown her way. You know, um, there's really only five that we focus claim, on. Though. That's a big claim. It is. It really is. But that's why we chose these five, right? And, and not because there are umpteen billion, not billion, but, you know, there are dozens of archetypes out there. Mm -hmm. But we wanted to really simplify this so that people could, um, if, you, if you can access the five, then there's not much that will come up that you don't have the right tool to, yeah. to bring to, you know? Um, the, the five that we talk about are the warrior S who's fabulous for starting things and independent, rolling up her sleeves, getting stuff done. Um, she's playful, you know, she's, she's, she's the clown. She can defuse things, rough and tumble with the kids, that kind of thing. There's the lover and the lover is yes, definitely uh, centered in, in our sensuality and our sexuality, but she's also the center of our self care. Again, for your ladies, I bet that if they were to take our profile, a lot of them would have low lover. Because if you don't look after your body for a period of time, um, then your body stops looking after you and you end up as a client of, of you, right? Because yep. you're not looking after the vessel. Yep. Lover is the one who looks after the vessel. Um, there's mother power type, which is that place of unconditional love, of safety, of solace that we bring to so many. There's the queen who is clear in her place in the world. She is decisive. She... She sets boundaries, she sees the vision, and there's also the sorceress. And sorceress is that inner part of us that connects to whatever we relate to that's bigger than us. Um, you know, God, goddess. That inner wisdom, that intuition, yeah? That wise woman kind of uh, part. That we often lose contact with, don't we, as we, as we go through the life and stress. and We, we really do. Age. And I'm noticing it a lot in our community right now because we're so busy juggling, right? Which is normal. We are in the middle of a global pandemic. To be doing anything other than that would be abnormal. Like it's good. It's, 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 it's uh, I don't, well, normal is not the word. I don't want to say this is the new normal because it's not, but it's common and we shouldn't be feeling bad. We're not alone, right? That's what's happening. Yeah. But then um, the other piece that's there around it is that we do lose connection to our source of faith. And in times of great change, there's two things that we really need. It's our ability to imagine a future, which is sorceress, like imagine a future beyond this horizon and faith that we're going to be okay, that no matter what happens, we're going to be okay. And that also is coming from that aspect of sorceress. 
So we're spending a lot of time coaching our community at the moment to cut, to remind people to bring those little moments in their day where they connect with that something bigger. And a lot of women are discovering, oh my God, I don't have anything, you know, especially if we grew up religious and then we turned away from it, but we didn't replace it with anything. Like sometimes, you know, we've got a lot of women out reconnecting with nature right now because she has so much wisdom in that context, right? Yeah, yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense. Mm. Um, and, and so these tools, basically, they are, it, I guess they're, they're, they're conscious ways of impacting our behavior, aren't they? Because a low, so much of what we do is subconscious, isn't it? It's just what we're on autopilot. We're running off stories we've told ourselves all our lives and all of that. And these tools actually help you get back into the conscious in, to term, in terms of um, impacting your behavior and your choices. Yeah, so it's it, both conscious and subconscious. So we do work on both of those levels. Um, uh, so we, we get tools so that kind of in any given moment we can go, oh, okay, that just happened consciously, which power type would be best with me for me to respond with in this moment. But equally, um, that we notice that in our community, the big change happens when we dig in and down and do the deep subconscious or unconscious work. Yeah. Where we go into these fundamental limiting beliefs of uh, I, I'm not good enough or um, I'm not supported or, um, I, don't or uh, That's my one. I, I don't fit in, right? I don't fit in. Um, yeah, all of these sorts of things. They're, they're these stories that we tell ourselves. I'm fundamentally flawed in some way. Everyone else can do it, but not me because I've got this fundamental flaw. Um, it might not be that language, but those sorts of beliefs and the old emotions that we tend to carry around with us. So, so we, we kind of work on both fronts. We go in and we look at the past and not, not, not so much in that we're particularly intrigued with what happened with the past, but we look at the stuff we're still carrying from the past and we develop a way to let that go. And we've got a number of great release meditations and processes that we do to clear that stuff out. And then, um, uh, we look at we, we look at in the moment bringing mindfulness uh, into each moment and becoming more conscious of how we're responding and that way we're working on both things together because if we rely only on consciousness and willpower you can't make change mm. um, we need both there's a great um, it's a really great metaphor actually which I which I think describes it beautifully uh, from Chip and Dan Heath who wrote the book uh, Switch How to Change When Change Is Hard. And they talk about the elephant and the rider. So if there's a, uh, you know, if, if someone wants to ride an elephant, um, there's this tiny little rider sitting on top of a bloody great elephant, right? And so the, the, the rider is like our conscious mind. The rider chooses the path and says, I want to head in that direction. But the elephant is the one who takes us in the, in the direction, right? That's our unconscious mind or our subconscious mind. If the rider is saying we're going that way, but the last time the elephant went down there, there was fire and elephants are terrified of fire. They will not go down there, no matter how hard the drive, the, it, we yank. And I see this a lot in health and vitality change, right? Um, or, or even, you know, starting or growing a business. We see where we want to go and our rider knows what we need to do. But our elephant's like, oh, no way, because it's going to mean, you know, I'm going to have to get more visible or I'm going to get gorgeous and that's going to mean I'll have to have an affair or, you know, all of these weird things that go on underneath um, you know, that stop people. These are the things that I've heard in our community, right? That stop us going down, which you're not conscious of until you dig in. It's the equivalent to the, to the elephant's fire down that path. So we need, that, we need the rider to know that's the conscious, but without the unconscious on board, doesn't happen. So we've got to do this inner work to get our unconscious mind heading in that same direction. And then the third little piece of it that they talk about is the path's got to be clear. You know, if you can't get through that way, then you can't get through that way. And that often just looks at like, well, the habits you want to change, how do you make it easy? You know, simple things like before you go to bed at night, you put your trainers and your, you know, and your jogging bottoms out. So it's a first, so you just get up and put it on and go, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so there's those three <coughs> aspects that we spend, I guess those are the kind of unifying principles of, of how we uh, orchestrate change with, with, our, with our women, conscious and unconscious. And then... Um, uh, things that make it easier, you know, tools to make it all easier. I, I love that. I'm going to have that image now. I've got to get to know the elephant. That's mm. the thing. Get to know your elephant. <laughs> you really do. You really do. I think there's only only one great journey to go on in life, and that's that. Yeah. To totally. know your elephant, right? Brilliant, brilliant. Thanks, Joe. Now you have got um, an, um, a new program. I'd like you to just tell us about it because it sounds awesome, and um, 
I have been all over this trying to you know just promoting it for you because it's just incredible what's in there so just just tell us in your words what what, what people can expect from the living the change program yeah we're really excited about living the change it was always on our plan to create but probably six months into the future and then when coronavirus arrived and it took away our ability to do events we realized that our community needed it more than ever so effectively living the change is an online coaching and training program uh, to be able to support women who are grassroots women leaders who resonate with what I was talking about earlier, this desire to want to impact, whether that be in a small, you know, a small way with their family or a huge way, uh, you know, glo globally, we want to, we want to make impact, uh, but we are committed to doing it from a new paradigm way, from the women's power types, from what we would call soft power, as opposed to burnout. So if you're looking to have impact without burnout, um, and you want the com most complete tool belt to be able to do that, as well as to go in and do this inner work and get to know your elephant and let, let that stuff go. That's what, that's what this is created to do. And I'm really super proud of it because what we've managed to do is pull in all of the tools that we've been teaching for over five years um, and we're organising them uh, in such a way as, uh, as an, someone can work their way through it at a pace that works for them. Uh, and while the tools are fabulous, the real reason that people are joining is be for coaching. Most of us need someone else outside of us to hold the mirror up and say, oh, hello, did you just notice that about yourself? Mm -hmm. You know, we all, we all need that, uh, that coach. I, ne I need my coach. Help us see the elephant. <laughs> Help us see the elephant, right? Yeah, because most of the time we forget we're even riding an elephant. We're trying to go down this path. I'm like, why is nothing moving? Well, because you're sitting on an elephant and it wants to go the other way, right? Um, so... Uh, so there's coaching alongside it. And we have three levels so that you can choose a level of coaching that's affordable for you um, and get you your results. So at the, at the very, uh, and right now we've got founding member rates and Nick and I were just chatting before we got on here. We're pretty damn low for the, <laughs> the value that you're getting um, because we're just still putting the finishing touches into the members area and beautifying it and stuff. But I couldn't, we couldn't wait to get it out any longer. We just need, people needed it. And because we're still, you know, we're still tinkering a bit in the back end, we're doing really amazing rates to come in and get started straight away, plus help us learn what we need to learn to, to make it beautiful and the best. Um, so from anywhere between £27 a month uh, at our bronze level right up to gold, where you get your very own one-on-one -on -one coach for only two ninety seven a month, uh, you can find something to suit your budget. And that's what I'm most proud about. Because in our community prior to this, we haven't really had something that every woman could access. And I know there will still be some women who, women who can't, but I do know that the power that gets um, unleashed when we get access to these tools, when we get that elephant on board and we can start working with our unconscious mind, um, it's so huge and it's got such great value. So we really wanted to be able to get this out globally and to as many women as needed. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's living the change and I love it. And the, we've, uh, right now we've got doors open on the founding member launch until midnight uh, Friday, yeah. cool. uh, London time. And, um, and then doors will be closed and I'm turning all my attention into the community then to really deliver exceptional uh, and extraordinary value. And God, we've got hundreds and hundreds of members joining us. So the, the community yeah, are, are really, not, really loving it. I'm really not surprised. The tools in there are incredible. And even if you just join at the basic level, you get access to all the tools plus coaching, um, group coaching, yeah. and you get access to um, Susie and Annie or coaches, um, kind of med they do a monthly thing, don't they? It's just incredible. Yeah. Just, yeah. That, just that alone is worth the, the 27 quid, <laughs> in my view. Anyway, Joe, is there anything else you want to add for now? Um, it's been um, amazing. I love your work, you can tell, but I am a massive fan. And, and because it complements what I do so well as well, because without the, the, that piece that you're teaching, no one can be truly healthy. So um, I really appreciate what you're doing for women all over the world. And um, good luck with it. And um, we'll see, I'll see you very soon. Yeah, thank you, darling. And really look forward to getting to know your ladies as they join us. Take care. Bye. Bye. Right.